did another two hour workout with Grandmaster Suarez, other side. Jab it. And after that, I was toast very, very much. I don't know how many hundreds of kicks we did on the spot. But coming back and working out after doing that Saturday workout with a, I don't know, at least three or four hundred big twist. Downward kicks. And doing another workout, two a day. It's been a while since I've done two a days. Big circle with the hips. That was kind of fun too. Okay, the knee rotation. Switch. Shoulders. Switch. Hug yourself. Okay, shake it out. Okay, walking ready stance. Up a little ballo ligius, the front leg stretching, just straight leg. Ah, good. Oh, yeah, a little tight in the hamstring still. Set, set, toss it, toss it. Look, hello, a hook, good. Switch, ah, good. Set. That's it. That's it. Look. Oh. Oh. Good. Good. You'll notice whenever I'm doing a stretch, I try to bring my hands up, elbows in, whatever I'm doing. So let's do outside the end right now. Big leg swing. Set. Whatever I'm doing, I tend to bring my hands up. It's just a habit. When you go to kick, it's a good habit. Big circle. Another direction, big circle, same leg. Go, go. Go, go. And switch other leg, outside the end, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and inside to out. Anna. Two. Set. Set. Gasset. Gasset. Go. 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 All right, heart rate's coming up a little bit. Right leg back, hands are up. Front snap kick, right leg. Put it down, step back with your left. Front snap kick, left leg. Alternating legs on your own. Sit. Sit. Awesome. Awesome. Go. Hello. Oh. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Right leg back. Front kick. Back kick. Okay. Front kick. Back kick. Right leg only. Ana. Two. Set. Kick high. Net. Toss it. Just stretch your leg out. Yasa. Go. Go. A hook. Good. 
Now you'll notice even when I'm doing a back kick, I got my hands right here in front of my chest, elbows in. Just have it. Okay? It's the same in your pattern. Do any kind of kicking motion, there's always a direction to where your hands should be. Starting block in front of the chest, pulling with the kick. But they should be up and not always loose. So just be in a habit. You can be down, you're sparring, you go to kick, hands come up, you go to get ready to punch, punch, hands are up, and you kick. Just get used to having at least one hand up when you're kicking. And the other side, one, two. Sit. Sit. Toss it. Toss it. Look up. Look up. Look up. Go. Yeah, right leg back. Now, front, back, side. We have three kicks. The directions are the direction is up chabusigi to D. Okay? Dui chagi to C. Yap chagi to A. This would be the Korean name of the kicks. Right leg back. One, two, three. Down right leg repeat. Dul. One, two, three. Right leg back. Sit. Sit. Tasso. And Yasud. Okay, now switch, left leg back. Left leg's doing the same three kicks. Hana. Good. Breathe with your technique, breathe. Set. Set. Awesome. Breathe. Exhale with the kick. Yasa. Go. Oh. I think I forgot seven. Yo. Is that okay? That's okay. I only did five or six on the other leg. That's okay. Relax. If you have a weak leg on that, do a couple extra on the weak side. Okay. All right, right leg back, front kick, back kick, side kick, turning kick, ball of foot 45, leave it forward and step back. Now you have your other leg back. One, two, three, four, leave it forward and step back. So we're gonna alternate legs, front, side, uh, front, Back, side, turning. And the turning kick is to AD. And the AD line, A, D, the A, AD line, is similar to the 45 degree angle. Okay, so right leg back. Four kicks. Ah. Place it forward and step back the other leg. Boom. four, ten times, that's 40 kicks. When you're working on your own kicking, and you don't have anything to hit, you don't have a resistance to hit, you want to work on your breath control, your 
balance, flexibility, your precision, you're kicking on your own. Don't give up one of those items to get a couple more kicks in. Because repetition isn't very good if you do repetition without some precision. When you do repetition without extension of your body. So as we get tired, we tend to kick lower, we tend to not rechamber the kick as we get tired. So what I prefer is to do less repetition correctly. And when you really can't do it anymore, really don't forget your position, your form, okay? your flexibility and extension, your power, your precision to a particular height. Even though you may not be able to do it. <laughs> Try to do it, right? Okay, so now the last one. One, two, three, four, five. And there's that downward kick, and the downward kick is the D. So we've got five with the right leg, and you have to be able to rechamber and control your body and control your balance. And also, don't forget to kick, you know, kick high with some extension, some power. And uh, attempt to do all five. Right leg and then left leg. All right, right leg back. Okay. Anna. Good. Ms. Villanueva, that's very good time. Very good timing. Amount of time for each kick is equal, even though you have to move your hips around. Okay, so left leg should be back now. The left side. Go. Two, three. Four, five. Now we move our right leg back. Ten. Ten. Nasser. Nasser. Nope. Nope. Oh. Oh. Yo. All right. Very good. Shake down. Okay. So right legs back. I'm going to do a Superman punch. Moving forward. Like that. Okay? Bring the leg forward. Turn around. Same leg uh, that was uh, your rear leg will become your front leg. Your rear leg stays as the rear leg. Watch. You go forward. Boom. Bring it forward, pivot 180 degrees. Turn and kick, put it down. Step back. Downward kick. Now our left leg is back. Okay, so going towards the camera or going side to side, doesn't matter. Right leg back. There we go. Right hand Superman punch. Go. Bring the right leg forward. Just pivot around. Right leg is going to kick 180 degrees. Turn it, kick. Put it down. As soon as it touches the ground, push to the rear. As soon as it touches to the ground, bring it forward, downward kick. Okay? And you should have your left leg forward. And then again, right leg back. Okay, right leg back, Superman. Boom, step forward. Right leg, turning kick, touch, come back, touch, downward kick. Now your left leg is back, there we go, okay? Now we're gonna do the left side, Superman, boom, bring it forward. Turning kick, touch and back, touch and downward kick. And our left leg is forward. Right leg back, go, boom, punch, turning, touch, back, touch, downward kick. Okay. Slide back, we got our left leg, go, Superman, touch. Turning, touch, back, touch, downward. Left leg forward. Left leg forward. 
Right leg back. Ready, go. Superman punch. Bring it forward, turn. Turning kick, touch. Go back, turning, downward kick, touch. Then your right leg is forward. Go. Right leg is back. Two more. Now let's do up. Uh, let's do on your own. Right leg back. A set of four. Okay, so that whole sequence. Forward, other side, right leg again, and other side. We'll go four times on your own. Go. Nice. So you may have heard me say, when we're doing repetition of sequences of technique, something like that where we're combining it with footwork, we're creating a pattern. We're creating a pattern. And it might be a pattern that you use in sparring. You might offense, come forward, the guy goes past you. Again. Turning kick. You might come back. Back kick. Okay. Now you can repeat that pattern over and over again and kind of grain it in your body. You can watch video of people fighting and you see sequences that are effective. And then you take those sequences as a pattern and repeat them. This is how you start to train your body to put those moves together in sparring. And usually there are three to four moves. They can include fakes, like that, or hand. Hand fake, body fake, switch your stance, and you just pick a pattern, something like that, that is something that you like, and do it five times, put it together on your own. So here's another one just for fun. It's another one to think about. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go fake with our feet like that. We're gonna bring our hand up and we're just gonna fake. Okay, just kind of a jab fake, just to see what our opponent does. And our rear leg is gonna go turning kick, High side kick. So I'm going to go from here. One. I'm going to come back. Boom, boom. So side turning kick with the instep and then side piercing kick. Consecutive kicking. Then I'm going to push off that foot and come back. My opponent comes towards me. We each other. Back kick. Okay? So. First side. Fake. Come back. Rear leg, turn it side, okay? Touch, touch it down. Push back, continue around, we chug you. And now your left leg is forward. So we'll go through the sequence again. Right leg back, okay? Um, fake, come back. Rear leg, turning side, touch, come back. Back kick. Leave it forward. Fake. Come back. Turning kick. Side. Touch. Come back. Back kick. Leave it forward. All right, so now we got the sequence. This is a pattern or a sequence that you might use in sparring. Right leg back. Here we go. One. Two. two. Touch. Come back. Back kick. Okay. Ready? Other side. One. Come back. Two, two, touch, come back, back kick. Okay. Now just for fun, do this pattern, our right leg is back. After you get done with your back kick, do any hand technique you want. Just add it on there. So when you get done with the back kick, we do our fake, we do our turning side, touch, back kick, one, two punch. Or one, one, a jab or whatever. Knife hand strike, whatever. Okay, so right leg back. Ready? Go. Nice. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Other side. Go. Fake. Boom, boom. Touch, come back. Back. One hand, one hand, one or two. That's right. Good. Excellent. Let's do this. Uh, let's do a sequence like this. 
this one or some variant, whatever you feel like doing. Let's do a set of four. So we're going to do both sides twice again. Ready? Go. So, your chore before next Saturday is to come up with a sequence of three to five techniques, hand, foot, fakes, footwork, sequence of three to five, that is an offensive sparring sequence, meaning your points are even or you're down in points and you're trying to score. You have to have some something in your pocket that makes sense. It might be double jab at the lead leg. Right, that's a start. Jab with the hand, then back kick. But it's a sequence of three to five movements. It's offensive in nature and sparring oriented. You can even move offline, right? You don't have to be linear. Now the reason why I'm asking you to do this is because on Saturday, whoever shows up from this group on Wednesday to Saturday, you will show your presentation of that sequence, and we are going to do that sequence, everybody, 20 times each side. So it better be good, because I don't want to do 40 of them if they suck. <laughs> All right. One last little sequence on kicking. Do some back. What I did at the beginning of the class is called consecutive kicking. I'm putting uh, multiple kicks, different targets on the same leg. So here's another little sequence that we'll work on. Front kick, side turning kick, hook kick, and side piercing kick. Okay, this is all with right leg. It's going to be the D, A, D, A, D, the A. Okay, so front, front, side turning, hook, Back of heel, side piercing, and then back. The right leg. All right, ready? Right leg. Anna. One, two, three, hook, side piercing, and back. Go. One, two, three, side piercing, and back. Set. One, two, three, side piercing, and back. Trying to fight the side piercing. Four. And five. And back. And then switch. And the dumb side. Go. One, two, hook. And side. Whoop. Side piercing. And back again. Go. One, two, hook. Side piercing. Back again. And three. And four. Five. One, two, three, four. All right. Okay, shake it out. Don't cheat to a chimney. Don't have room. Just your steps, it's okay. By the count. Ha! Good. Set. Net. Gossip. Gossip. Oh, gee, what all? 
Sure. On the Chong Chi tool, there's very few patterns that do this particular type of sine wave motion. Chong Chi and Dan Gun, and then we don't really do it all that much more for the rest of the patterns. But the movement that's particular to Chong Chi is 180 degree turn into a block. And the first motion that you should do on almost all motions, with very few exceptions, is you bend your knees and elbows. And when that does happen, your head goes down. And you do this simultaneously with your movement backward. And then you come down into the walking stance with the low block. It's the same with the punch into uh, L stance. You go the same. Elbows and knees bend. And I'm starting, to, I'm starting my retraction. As I pull back, I'm going to bend my knees and elbows, but I'm also going to start drop, uh, moving backwards. So the motion is not like this. Down and then turn. And the motion is not like this. Turn. Down and up. Okay. It's very particular. It is a smooth transition from here and backward motion. Boom. Okay. So this 180 degree turn, I want you guys to try to understand how to do the sine wave with your body and fix it if you're not doing it correctly. We're going to also work on just the basic sine wave motion as we move forward with a punch. Okay? It is not like this. Okay? It's not down and then stand up and move forward. It is not move forward, down, and up. See the different type of motion that I'm doing there? Both of those are incorrect. It should be fluid. I start to bend my knees as the first thing. But as I do that, my body starts to move forward. The motion from my, from my start, if you look at my head, if it had a little dot on it, it would go like down, up, down. And that's that curve. I'm trying to look for that kind of wavy curve, which isn't a sine wave, but it doesn't really matter. It's just the name, okay? What we're trying to do is the wind-up. I'm exaggerating it right there, and I want you to try to do it, okay? So let's do Chonji again, and we're going to go through the parts. I'm going to go first, and I want you to mimic me as best you can, okay? First motion, bend your knees, bend your elbows, for, for slightly backward motion, low block, okay? Hana. Bend your knees and elbows, move your hand forward, off your hip, come forward. Good. Okay, one more time on that very beginning, two feet. Okay, one, cross, two. Sorry, not there. <laughs> Ready? Go. One, cross, two, three, four. Right, so kind of fluid, fluid motion. Now we got the 180, right? It's the same downward motion of bending my knees with movement. It should be fluid. So like, as I start to bend, I shouldn't bend and then stand up and then move. I want to move it all together. Bend and move, and then fall under this one. So I come up and fall. Okay. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. Go. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. Go. 90. 180. 180. Down, up, down. Same going backwards, exactly the same. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. As I go forward, down, up, down. As I go back to forward, see that motion of the wave is the same, going backwards or forwards. All right, so let's try again. Chonji tool. No, if you have to exaggerate this down up down motion to feel it, do so. We'll exaggerate it first. Ah. Good. Set. Left. Nasa. Yasa. Go. Hello. Aho. Good. Okay. It's 
20 degree turn movement happens also in Dongun. And everybody here is upright to do this. To me, first movement, bend your knees and elbows. I come slightly backward. Prepare my hands, and then my foot goes ahead of my hands, and my hands catch up. I want my stance and my technique and my breath all to come together at the same time. But not like this, right? Because I want to have power in my hands. I want to have that snap in my hands. So that means the hands are behind the foot, they're behind the stance, and they catch up, right? They catch up. And to catch up, they have to move faster and they should accelerate to the tank, to the point of contact. So you don't want them to move fast and then slow. You want them to go fast, like snap to that end point point of contact, and it should be simultaneous with your breathing and your stance. Okay. Coordinate these things together and focus on that, but don't forget a down and down motion is fluid motion. It's not a down, move forward, down. It's not a move forward, up and down, move forward. Fluid, fluid. Okay, so let's try down moon by the count. Down, up, down. Good. Now we have the high punch. Set, down, up, down. That's 180 degree turns. Same. Go. Down, up, down. And then uh, down, up, down. Down, up, down. And down, up, down. Now the twin outer forearm block. One, down, up, down. And two, down, up, down. High punches. And now the first time we do this, continuous motion from regular motion. Half facing, full facing, rising block. Half facing, full facing. Facing, full facing. Half facing, full facing. L stance, outward strike, knife hand. Punch. Outward strike, knife hand. Punch. Now I flipped my pattern around to show you the conti continuous motion, but that's okay. Let's try to do Don Boon together. Get together. Show me. Remember, stance, breath. Hands have to catch up. Go slightly backwards and catch them up. <clears throat> this is a good snapping, middle, knife hand guarding block, other hand in front of the chest. Hands parallel, okay. Back knee out. 70-30 wing distribution. High punch. Go. 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 Full facing. Go. Full facing. Go. Full facing. Go. Get out of forearm block. The middle. This is a rising block. The secondary block is to your CV line. High punch. Go. Go. Half facing. Full facing. Continuous motion, continuous breath. Sounds like a leaky tire. Continuous breathing. Rising block. Good. Show. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions about? The things I just went over. How many, how many people were doing sine wave incorrectly compared to what I just went over? So most of you feel like you're doing it right, huh? I was doing it wrong. Yeah, I know what you do. I watched it for many years. Me too. I'm just admitting it now. <laughs> well, 
one of the things that's nice about video is that you also get to see what my mistake, I get to see my mistakes. And um, video is really helpful. You watch uh, your own video, watch video of yourself. It's real easy now with your camera to set it up, take a, do a video of yourself, watch yourself do pattern, and then go check it out and do it like a judge and you'll see what happens. You know, so many things that we can fix. Usually you start with a stance, but the sine wave motion, especially as you become a black belt, as you're getting the black belt, you need to understand how everybody is doing it and try to match as best you can. And when you do that long enough, you'll start to feel it. And then when you feel it, you go, oh, okay, I get it. It is, uh, it's not magic. It is irritating. I mean, it's irritating. When I started in martial arts, we didn't do this sine wave shit. It's like, what the hell is that? I had a lot of people make fun of me because I, they see me do it with it. But now that I do it, I don't think I would do it another way. I, I like it much better. It's much more fluid motion. It makes more sense for the body. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make sense for certain movements still to me to this day. Um, but for the most of them, it does. So when you, feel, when you start to feel this, you'll see the kind of power we can generate with our body when we have good, we, we incorporate the, the mass of our body into the technique, just like uh, when you're throwing like a pitcher. And the pitcher is the best analogy, baseball pitcher. Uh, because of the windup, so I use that a lot. But there's other ones. I mean, from the golfer to the golfer, you know, it does the backstroke, you know, to whack it. You know, there's a lot. There's a relaxation on the backstroke, and that is the same kind of thing when we're doing a knife hand strike. Is a relaxation. Inhale, relaxation, backward motion, snap, and it's got to catch up to the foot. Okay, so we're bringing our eyes, our our breath, and our stance and our technique all together at the same time. And one of the things that's revealed to me when I watch myself on video is that my foot gets there ahead of the time, often. It's right there ahead of my hand. And, and I, it's an uh, old habit. It's just hard for me to fix. And when I really focus on it, I watch it on video, I just go, damn, that's terrible. But you, but you, you try to fix it, okay? So uh, who wants to uh, have us take a look at their pattern real quick? Okay, I, I see you volunteering, Miss Villanueva. Good job. Nice of you to step up. Okay. So, what pattern do you want to do? You want to do the one you're working on a rank or what we just did, just for a reminder? Whatever you want to do. Um, I can do this one that we just did because I don't remember it so well. Um, I think it was kind of messy, so. Let's do Don Boone. Let's have everybody do Don Gun because it has a little piece of the 180 degree turn. It also has the continuous motion, which most of you don't do right. So even to this day, so <laughs> let's do, uh, let's all do Don Gun. Uh, we'll give you, everyone will give a, a little bit of advice. So you go first and then I'll move it around, okay? Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Towards us, towards the camera, low block. Oh boy, we're offline now. <laughs> Come back, I'm gonna help you out. Come back, Chumbi. Chumbi. Okay, knife hand guarding block to your left, go. Yes, you turn too much, you're turning your back to us. Less rotation, go back to Chumbi. Less rotation, less rotation. Yeah, you see you turn your body all the way to the side to us. Okay, don't do that. Yeah, just to move, uh, move like this, so I'll show you, you can see me. Here's what you're doing. I'm gonna get you through the pattern and then we'll switch to somebody else. You're going here. <laughs> you turn your side all the way before you go. Don't, don't do it. Watch. I don't ever turn my side. Slight. I'm already, I'm already side facing. So when I go here, half facing. I don't have to go like this. Okay. All right. Jumbi. Okay. Go. Yeah. Still too much, but go. Okay, now 180 degrees, go. Yes, go. Okay, now towards, uh, towards the camera, low block. 
Yeah, so you turn so much. Your body turns before you prep. Do more preparation with your arm and less with your body spinning like that. Okay, go forward, high punch. Yeah, go forward, go. One, two, three. Okay, now back up a little bit so we can see the rest of the pattern. Okay, now you gotta do a 270 degree rotation to your left and you do the twin outer forearm block, okay? So pivot on your right foot. Yeah, the other way, we'll go face the other direction. Yeah, yeah, face away from the camera. Yes, now go forward, high punch. Step forward, high punch. Yeah, now 180 degrees. Yeah, then go forward, punch. Now you have facing away from the camera, the low block and the rising block, continuous motion, go. Yeah, not too bad, go, rising block. Rising block, rising block. Yep, and then 270 degrees, yeah, knife hand. There you go, now you got you, now you know where you're at. Go forward, high punch, 180 degrees. Yeah, so go back, go back to the punch. Remember what I said, you bend your knees and elbows and start the motion all together, go. Yeah, yes, better, better. It's hard on your knee, you have to bend your knee, okay? Go. Yes, very good sine wave motion on the punch. And the punch is a moving forward walking stance. That part's good. Now, see if you can just stay where you are in that stance, but back up, uh, do a stepping backward uh, front punch with your right hand, still facing the same direction, but you'll be in the opposite walking stance. So just back up like in Chongji, go. Yeah, now go forward. Now go backward. Yeah, but just a little too much turn of your waist. You're turning too much to get your power, okay? Now go back uh, Go back forward. Okay, now you can go back to Chumbi. Right on. So I'm not gonna let anybody else give you any feedback unless Miss Mohan wants to. You want to? Um, I think the main thing I noticed was just that you're a little bit I don't know how to put it apart from like stiff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I noticed, just the stiffness. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since like I have practiced patterns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if, if, we don't, if we don't remember the pattern, then you can't, it's hard to work on all the little pieces to make it feel right. It just doesn't feel right. So we walked you through it. You see it's that I-shaped pattern on the ground. Okay, so now you, were, now you can kind of remember because I was yelling at you. Uh, <laughs> because then you'll, now you should practice. Practice before next time. We, next Wednesday, I'll take a look at it again. Okay. Um, but be very aware of that turning. You don't have to turn your body like this. You go from here. Mm -hmm. go for, for knife hand guarding block there, watch my upper body. Hmm. Right? Yeah, I see the defense. I'm already going into my half facing this way. I don't need to, I don't need to go. <laughs> you do, and then when you turn 270, you're gonna go 100, 180, even then you go. Right, it's too much. It's already there. Just go more direct, okay? Okay. Go more direct. All right. So, Sergi, do you have enough light so we can see you? Is there any way we could get some light on you or you just don't have enough light? Because I don't think I, we could see you. You need a camera, you need your camera to have this big spotlight on you. Because right now you, all I see are like nostrils. And you're muted, Sergi. Oops, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think it's gonna be very hard to see. It's okay, right? it's okay. Do you have any questions about what I just went over with Don Goon? Uh, No, I just I've just noticed that a lot of times, like for for me in my case, it helps me a lot to record myself, because sometimes in my mind it feels right, but then I look at myself and I'm like, okay, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, and something something that I've noticed from me is that when I compare myself to like others, is that I think I over exaggerate 
like the bouncing motion or like I bounce a lot and I and I don't know really if like how to correct that. I know you did a video of yourself like uh, and Gabri uh, Gabriel, yeah, right? Gabriel, yeah. mm -hmm. And we talked a little about the double bounce maybe? Maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't think in that video, no. Okay. But the the ones from the in the ones from the tournament, uh -huh. I can see that, like very clearly. Yeah. yeah. So I would rather have you uh, over exaggerate at your rank, mm -hmm. over exaggerate than under exaggerate, because then um, as you get older, you tend to under exaggerate it more and more, and then it just gets to be non-existent really. So it's just too subtle, you know. And right now, if you watch world champion guys doing pattern, I mean, it's pretty exaggerated. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's okay to be over exaggerating now at this point in your in your position. I would say just try to make sure that we're doing the motion right. It's that it's that curving motion like that versus you know those other ones I discussed. You know, you come halfway and drop up and down and then go forward, a kind of bouncing kind of thing. Like that. Right. It's like a it's like a echocardiogram. Did <laughs> You want more of that, you want more like this. Uh -huh. Okay, so try that. Okay, okay, Miss Mohan, let's see how bad your Dongun is. All right, let's go. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thielman, are you ready to do it over there? I'm gonna pin yes, uh, that. Uh, that's Mr. Ballard out over there, but I'm right here. Okay, Ballard, you're gonna do Don. just do a, I'm gonna put Anya up for half. And then I'm going to pin you for the other half. You guys go together. Um, Don Goon Tool. Don't shrug, don't shrug your shoulders, man. I want to see the Don Goon look like awesome. And then obviously, it's Mohan lives in a big city instead of Texas because she can't get, she had a little tiny room and no space. All right. I'm going to pin you half. I'm going to switch the pin halfway through so you won't have to worry, Miss Mohan. Just don't screw up until you're halfway done. Then no one will no one will be watching. <laughs> All right, Don Goon Tool, both of you together, nice and steady. Okay, see, Jack. Okay. Battle. Sure. Okay, Thielman. What'd you see? Sir? Uh, look a little stiff. Look a little stiff. Just kind of very like it, it sort of looked like he was trying to get power but trying to force it. So if we look at if we look at the both patterns, I think that for the most part your stances are okay, and that's the thing that I'm you know you look at first when you're looking at the pattern is for the most part when you finish the movement the pat the, the stance looks correct. The thing that is lacking are a bunch of little details. So this is this is not a this is not a bad thing that the big thing the stance is fairly correct because that's that's the big thing when stances are wrong we can it's really hard you can't fix the details until we get the stance right but let's uh, both of you do the first movement again chum chumbi okay go back ballard go back chumbi all right both together okay ready go Go back one more time. Go. Oh. Okay, so when I watch the first part of the motion, it appears as though Mr. Ballard is dropping his hands, and it may be just some, some camera angle, but the first motion, 
for me, when I'm doing Don Goon, the first motion is to, uh, is to raise my hands, even though I'm dropping my body. Okay? And what I'm seeing for both of you is a kind of, that, that kind of initial dropping of your hands. So when you're dropping your mass in the first part of the motion and you're bending your elbows, your hands should be going up from the ground, okay? They come from Chumbi up. So my body goes down, but my hands come up. So if you coordinate that kind of bending elbow, bending knee motion together, I think it will improve the way that, that, little, the way that looks, okay? So now um, do this one more time, both of you together. Okay, go. All right, you didn't drop your hands that time, Miss Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, you didn't drop your hands. Now think about someone side kicking you right in the ribs from, from, the, from the B line. If you think about someone side kicking you from the B, that's right, you want to drop that elbow a little bit more, right? This is, a, this is a middle knife hand guarding block. So you have a slight angle from your back shoulder to your front shoulder, and then you have your front tips of your tops of your finger at your shoulder line. When you do that, your elbow comes much farther down and protects your body, okay? Now your other hand, your reaction hand, this is a case for Mr. Ballard as well in the reaction hand. Right now, when you did the pattern on your own time, your reaction hand was here. So you need to bring it up, like right there at the ITF logo kind of thing, so that the hands, when you drop this hand down and you get that angle, now you match the angle. So they're parallel, okay? And, and here's what you were doing. Okay, you see the difference? So this is, a, again, a little detail. It's about thinking about the application of the technique. Someone's trying to punch you, okay? Their technique of their punch is in the chest line about that height, and you're blocking their forearm. So you need to think about that arm coming across the body and hitting with that knife, of that knife edge. The other hand is just protection. It needs to be up here more. And the elbow will be down. When you think about this technique that way, your elbow will be more down because you're like blocking the, you're blocking the punch. You're just doing the motion. You're not thinking about this application. I can tell. So when I see that, just think about it a little bit more and it'll make it better. Okay, both of you go back to me. Okay, ready? Go. Yeah, not too bad, Mr. Ballard. Go. Now you can go to the next movement. Yeah, go to the next movement. Yeah. Not too bad. Make sure it's a high punch, Miss Mohan. In the pattern you did, you forgot. Huh? Yeah, go. This is a two. This is 180 degree. So make sure you bend your knees and elbows as you move backwards. Go. Yeah. And go. Yeah, you fixed your hands that time. Yeah, go. Is half facing. Go. The punch is full facing. Go. It looks pretty good, Mr. Ballard. Go. Yeah. Not too shabby. Go. Go. Oh. Hey, Miss Mohan, remember that that rising block is directly on the CD line. So remember you're doing a, just you did a walking stance down the CD line. I know you're doing an L stance to the AB line, but if you did a walking stance down the CD line, that hand would be exactly like a rising block. No difference, protecting your center line. So make sure that the forearm is on the center line of your body, okay? even though you're in L stance facing on the AB. Now do a middle guarding block. Do that. That's right. There you go. Now you've done the twin outer forearm block. Much better. Much better. Go. Yeah. Okay. Go back, Ballard. To the punch. So when you do the continuous motion, you shouldn't lift up on your both heels. It's not a foot thing. It's a it's a it's a facing thing. Okay. So let's go for that for the punch into the continuous motion. We're almost done, you guys, I promise. Okay? Yeah. Go. Okay, both of you all, let's, uh, let's have you face into the camera. Ballard's facing the camera. I'm gonna show you, 
me do it one time. You all can watch. One time, I'm going to do it, then I'm going to switch it back. Pay attention to the upper body. Okay. So what you hopefully notice is that as I, I do the low block and half facing, but as I prep, as I prep for the rising block, I move to full facing. So this is the way the general taught it. I don't, I, 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 can tell you that it's right. It doesn't, it took me a long time. Here's what you guys are doing. Okay, so you're going half facing, then you're coming back and trying to get the full facing block. So go half facing, just bend your knees and elbows and go full facing. Half facing, bend your knees and elbows, go full facing. Half facing, bend your knees and elbows, then come up and then down again. Your full facing does not change for the entire sine wave motion of the second half. It doesn't go, okay? it goes half facing, full facing on the prep, down, up, down, full facing, full facing, full facing, whole time. There's no, there's no uh, hip rotation into the rising block except for a very short leg, except for the leg drive. Okay, so it's not a rotation. Not here, here. It's here, full facing, leg drop. Full facing, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Half facing, down, up, down. Okay? That's the way you should do it. That's the way it was taught. It's not easy. It doesn't feel like you're gate driving power because you want to have that power from your hip rotation. That's not the power for the rising block in the continuous motion. You go from one to the next. And it's, it's more of this up, down, and the leg drive. It kind of goes, you kind of go down, up, down, down, up, down. And you drive off your back leg. Don't try to open your hips again in between. Does that, mean, is that, is that clear? Sir. Yes. The heel would be hitting the same time you're your rising block gets hit. Your back leg, your back leg's heel is hitting the ground at the same time. In other words, your stance, that's right. Your, I can't see your heel, but, but the, the, that's right. Because uh, your, your, your stance, your breath, and your technique need to be coordinated. So we're half, halfway as I go bend, my, my heel is up. I come up, drive the leg. Half facing, down, up, down, boom, rising block. That heel gets jammed down into the ground as I'm doing it. So if you can think about this a little more like a, a settling your stance, you're settling your stance, and that's the counter force to this rising block motion. That is the way we should be doing it. And uh, most of you are not doing it that way. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd love to have it fixed before a black belt test. When we see this continuous motion. And in gay back, which is your first black belt pattern, we do it the opposite way. We go from rising block to uh, low block. So we have to do a half facing uh, rotation of our body when we do our low block. So it's actually the exact technique in reverse in gay back. Rising block, continuous motion to low block. So um, practice that, practice that. All right, so you guys okay? Yes, sir. Nine o'clock. You have any questions? I told you all it's going to be a one hour workout, so that's what we're doing. It's shorter. You don't get a hard, you don't get the hard sweat. We get you on, get you on Saturday, I promise. So are we, con are we going to continue training on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, like for the next weeks, or Wednesday and Saturday? I'll be, I'll be running classes on Monday, start, starting next Monday. Uh, and the Wednesday and Saturdays will continue also. Okay. And I don't know where Cardona go. I didn't even get a chance to. Am I? Am I not showing? I'm right here. No, there you are. I didn't have you on there. Oh, okay. Oh, Miss Patel popped in too. Good. How much of that did you see? Hi, Shashi. 
Hey, I was here the whole time. Yeah, she's been here this whole time. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Damn Zoom! <laughs> I saw Cardona at the beginning, and then I was like, there was, there's usually a little arrow that says, you know, you got more, there's more people, you can kind of scroll over, and it didn't. It didn't yeah, scroll. you can put gallery view, and you will see everybody. Okay. On, the gallery, on the right corner, up, up there, next to exit full screen, there is um, the right corner. Gallery view, hello! Are you guys seeing gallery view or do you have control over that? We have control I, over that. I think I have it set up to see gallery view. When I when I pin when I pin the video, um, when I pin the video to myself and you guys have gallery view, do you still see me or do you see everybody? Because I was moving that pin, I was kind of spotlighting, I was trying to spotlight on like Miss Mohan and then back to Mr. Ballard. Is that are you seeing them? No, I think I was, I was just, I, just I was seeing everybody. I was seeing everybody. You're seeing everybody on a gallery for the whole time. Yes, sir. Okay. I was, I was putting you in. A, in I, I pinned your video when we were doing the kicking training and all. And after the patterns, I put the gallery view. Yep, I, mean, I got it. I got it. Yeah. So whatever I do when I record the video, it's recording what I see. So um, I got I got everybody but card. Don and Sachi in there, um, but okay. So uh, yeah, the plan is to train on Monday at eight, I guess, right? Or are we doing? Yeah. Eight. Is it eight? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so Mr. Cardona and whomever else of the red belts that want to run a class, you guys can talk among yourselves and figure out how you want to do it. Sir. Wednesday, I will do an hour. You guys have another hour to do whatever you want in terms of the room. We don't have the room yet until the 14th of September. So if there's people going to the room, maybe I'll do an hour and I'll step out and then you guys can keep working if you're in the room. Um, there's nothing stopping you from continuing to do workouts whenever you want. Um, but we're gonna have formal ones now and then also on uh, Saturday at 10. And it's gonna be the same format I did on the summer. I'm gonna do a 45 minute cardio high intensity workout with stretching and ab work on Saturdays and it's just enough time to have a good day and not be sick to your stomach for the rest of the day. <laughs> and so it's a good workout. Today is gonna to be a little more technical stuff so we're not gonna get as hard of a cardio workout but I will do at least 15, 20 minutes of uh, kicking and moving and you know, just like we did today and then maybe some more technical stuff. And um, the only other thing I wanted to see is if, if I was gonna put, I was gonna actually add, do an ad from our Facebook page and kind of put it out to the University of Texas area um, and just and spend a little bit of money and, and kind of promote the club that way and see if people, we can get some new people. Um, the, new, the new people classes I would focus on Monday and Wednesday. So if whoever's there, um, I think, Mr. Cardona, you plan on using Zoom? Yes, sir. So you can you could set somebody off, set like two people off into their own little room, and they could work on stuff too. I think that's an option. Okay. Um, I'm not too familiar with how it works. I still have to figure a lot of stuff out. Yeah, it, and it's a little bit weird. Just like just tonight, like I thought I was. Uh, I thought whenever I pinned the video on my end that you guys were stuck with it. You know. But uh, apparently, you guys have the control to see whoever you want, focus on whoever you want to watch. Because um, it was interesting, like when I when I worked out with um, Grandmaster Suarez, they were doing a spotlight. They called it a spotlight, and they would focus on me. And so I was doing the movements, and then they focus on somebody else. And so as far as their video recording goes, they were capturing for everybody, everybody had to watch. Everybody had to watch that other person. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a choice. So I need to figure that out. So I, I, you can have a little bit of control about who, what people are watching. Not, not for any particular reason other than just like, hey, look, look, this is how I want you to do it. And you know, we can see. Maybe you can disable like pinning. Maybe there's like an option to disable it for others. Uh I'll, I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna do a little research. So I'm a little bit better. I mean, I, we've done this enough. 
to get by and I haven't spent any time thinking about how this software works other than, you know, let's get it, let's get it done so we can get a class to happen, you know, and um, I think there's a couple of tools that we might be able to use. Having the chat open is also nice too. If people want to say, hey, I have a question about that, you know, and you can have the little thing, it'll pin up, it'll make a little notice that you, got to, that you have a question. The beginning class, we may we may want to have just one, just have a class for beginners only, and see who shows up. We may not have anybody ever show up ever, um, but I think it's worth trying. And uh, maybe we have like a couple of students that are we just we just try a beginners class some somewhere. You guys could do it. Put it on. Any of you can. You know, Ms. Mohan and any of the Red Belts could, you could get together and you could say, look, let's advertise on Facebook and put it out. We'll have a beginner's class for people that start at the beginning of the semester. That might be a way to get a few people interested. But I'm happy with y'all if you want to keep working out. <laughs> And if you all want to change something or you want me to do something else, just let me know. I'm I'm willing to do whatever y'all would prefer. We did notably uh, receive two pings about interested, I assume, newcomers to the school. Um, one of them I friended on Facebook and added them to the group. Uh, they've yet to reply, but uh, I guess my point is we are like accruing members somehow we have to have some kind of we have to have some kind of uh, process to funnel them so that they can get engaged and feel part of the group and and get a workout in so it's worth their while too so um, maybe it's Saturday maybe right. it is Saturday it's just hey man guess what you got a 45 minute cardio and stretching and stuff we'll get to know each other you all get together wear something to work out in you know you know we'll People, most of you guys are adults, you can figure out how to move and then we slowly get you to, to doing it better. You know, get them to feel like they're part of the group first. And I'm also gonna open up the class 15 minutes ahead of time. So if you all wanna get together and chat, you can. No waiting room, none of that stuff anymore. So you can just jump in. Uh, oh yeah, I remember now. <laughs> on There's an there's a ITF page on Facebook and there's an ITF group. On the page, there is an email address, uttkditf at gmail.com. I, I emailed to that just to see if anyone was receiving emails from that. And I received no response because I don't know who owns it or who looks at it. <laughs> oh, do we you know? Do, we all do. We have the, the login for it. I can give you the login if you want. I just haven't checked it in a, in a while. OK. Well, maybe at the beginning of the semester, if they're using it, if it's on stuff, I don't know, is that on the, is that on our website too? Yeah. So we usually, I feel like people usually either email me or just use the rec sports portal because that's usually the one where we contact, like they have a new system where we contact people by them clicking interested in the clubs. Yeah. See, so you're the only person that's emailed me in the past, like it's a whole summer. I just see it now. That's because no one uses email anymore. Yeah. I just dated myself. Come on, dude, use Messenger. <laughs> Come on, and then, dude, Snapchat me, man. Come on. Snapchat. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think the Rec Sports portal is really good now for like intro people, because we can just see them, we just reach out to them. Awesome. Yeah. I know the first thing that if they're a beginner, they're going to be like, if they came on Saturday, they'd probably be like, holy shit. That'd be too much. I don't know. Or All right. it'll be exciting. Or it'll be exciting. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Finally get that, finally get that aggression out. So, ready. Yeah. Well, that's all. All sounds great, you guys. It was, uh, I enjoyed training tonight. I know it wasn't super hardcore, but I hope uh, you got something out of it. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, yeah. we're going to just keep doing them.
So uh, it'd be a short and sweet type of workout so you can get on with your day and get back to whatever. And if you ever, if you, anyone has any questions about anything, if they're working on stuff on their own and they want me to look at a video or do whatever, I can do it too. You just send it to me, however, on Messenger. <laughs> I don't, I don't take emails. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you sir all right bye-bye right. thank, thank you, you. Thank bye you. everyone thanks group for coming hug. group hug <laughs> group hug there <laughs>